friends, Lisa here for another video. Today I want to talk about how raw vegans are not immortal. We're not immortal. We are not, we are not going to be completely disease free for the rest of our lives. We're going to get old and die like everybody else. The thing is, is that I want to have the best health that I possibly can while I'm here. I'd like to enjoy the experiences that I have without feeling as crappy as I would eating other foods. Um, I want to enjoy spending time with people without leaving and feeling like there's a rock in my stomach and then getting home and passing out on the couch. I'd like to have enough energy to run marathons and spend time outside and do sports and ride my bike and all of that kind of stuff, I want to feel my best in my life. And for me, that's being a raw vegan. And just because I'm a raw vegan, a lot of people just say, well, they assume that I'm just never gonna get sick and I'm never gonna die. Well, of course I'm gonna die one day. I don't like thinking about it, but one day I will when I'm old, old, uh, hopefully. And I am not immune to getting sick. And now I haven't gotten sick, but I'm not saying that I never will. Maybe I will get sick. Maybe I'm tired some days from working a lot. Um, maybe I ate a little bit too much fat and I feel sluggish. Uh, there's so many different things. And as I'm going through this journey, I'm noticing the little slight subtle changes in my body. They're slight and again, subtle. They take time to heal. So my hormones, for example, took about seven to eight months to balance out and now they're balanced, but it did take time. It wasn't like I was immediately perfectly healed after two weeks on raw. I had to work with it. I had to work with my body and I had to keep giving it the nutrition that it needed to balance out. And it's going to be different for everybody. Everybody's issues are different. Uh, it depends on where you came from, or what you put in your body over the last however many years. So you need to work with yourself and you need to be patient. You need to give yourself what your body needs to heal properly. All that said, I don't think that we should look at raw vegans as being immortal or being putting them on pedestals and thinking that they're super amazing because we are still human. We still will get cold here and there, maybe. We will still die eventually. Yes, we look younger. Yes, we have more energy. And yes, all of these health problems go away for the most part, but we're never going to be perfect. No one's ever gonna be perfect. And again, no one's ever gonna be a perfect vegan either, or raw vegan. I mean, I still do nutritional yeast and garlic and all that kind of stuff that the purists don't believe that we should be eating. But even the purists aren't going to live forever. We just aren't. The whole point is to make the best choices while you're here so you feel your best while you're here. I want to experience all of the things that I can with a healthy, clean, happy body instead of just relying on food for my happy and comfort and, you know, feel crappy when I get to go on a holiday or whatever or regret that I didn't do a diet and lose weight and then go on a holiday. I don't have to worry about that kind of stuff because I eat the way I do. But again, if I do get sick, it's not the end of the world. People are gonna get sick and I will do my best with my food to help heal myself. But again, we are not immortal. <laughs> and a lot of people think we are, but we are not. We just live a lot healthier than the average person does. So if you want to feel better, just add more raw food to your day. Um, eliminate the animal products and add more fiber. It does take time to transition over when you start eating a lot of fiber. Dr. Michael Greger just had a video released a little while ago about how our ancestors actually ate close to 104 grams of fiber a day. I can't even get 90 to 100 on a good day if I'm eating like 2,700 calories of fruits and vegetables. So I can only imagine how much these people ate in fruits and vegetables because animal products and fats are really high calorie with zero fiber. So you can only eat so much of that to hit your calorie goals 
without getting any fiber. So if they're eating 104 grams of fiber, there's no way they're eating a lot of animal products. No way at all. If they are, it's like just a little bit as a condiment on the side when the rest, you know, 95% of what they're eating is plants. So when you transition over, you're gonna feel weird. Um, maybe your digestive system is a little upset because it's tuned to digest dead cooked food and animal products. It's not used to digesting that much fiber. So you just have to work with yourself. Eventually um, you will have your gut bacteria um, favoring fiber thriving guys. So they will start to digest the fiber, but you have to eat the fiber to feed those guys to grow them. So it's kind of a, you know, you get gas and bloating in the beginning and you just have to work through it while you feed those guys. Cause the other guys are gonna die off. The putrefactive bacteria, they'll die off eventually. And pretty soon you'll have a really big, nice thriving colony of good bacteria that help to digest your fiber food. Okay, so I apparently talk too much and my phone's running out of space. So I have to end this. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Click like if you did. Subscribe to my channel for more notifications for future videos, including what I ate in a day, more vlogs, and I'm gonna be posting some recipes from my 30 day meal plan, which is available. It's, uh, you can click in the description below. There's a link to go purchase my 30 day meal plan. Um, it's 30 days, uh, 90 recipes, and it's kind of step-by-step -step with prep, shopping lists, and all that good stuff. So you can go grab that and find me on Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, Instagram, and YouFood, all at Raw Food Romance. I'm going to wrap this up really quick. So have a great day, guys, and fruit on.